Uh, first up on the list, we're going to the Big East. We're going to the Xavier Musketeers, and Rob Doster has their oh. resolution. So, first and foremost, I think that what we've seen out of Xavier this season has been really, really promising, right? Um, mm-hmm. I think that their win over West Virginia is going to carry some legs. I think that uh, beating up on Cincinnati in a rivalry game was impressive to me. They got that win over Seton Hall. They got that win over Florida. And their three losses are by a combined, let me do a little bit of math here, uh, 15 points. Um, and all three of those teams are top uh, 20 teams on Kempom. So I think in a vacuum, Xavier's had a really, really successful start to the season. And it's been nice to see Sean Miller get out there and uh, kind of implement some of these new things offensively that he maybe picked up during his year off from listening to the guys like us talk on uh, on the field of 68. <laughs> but when you think of Sean Miller's teams, when you think of what he was the first time he was at Xavier, when you think of what his team was when he was at Arizona, it started with the defense, right? It was always elite defensively, and then they're going to figure it out on the offensive end of the floor. This year has been the exact opposite. So um, – I think his New Year's resolution is to find a way to get this team to guard. And that that sounds basic and that sounds simplistic. But when it comes down to it, this is a top 10 team on Ken Palm in adjusted offensive efficiency. They are outside the top 80 in adjusted defensive efficiency. And when you cannot guard at a high level, it's hard for you to make a deep run in March. It's hard for you to find a level of success and compete in the league. Uh, maybe not as good as the Big East um, overall as what it's typically been, but the New Year's resolution, is it, it, it's got to be something on the defensive end of the floor, and I think it's just as simple as find a way to get successive stops. It's been weird with him knowing Sean and knowing what he's about and then seeing his team come out and then see them struggle defensively. I mean, they, they are – they're giving up a ton of points, and he he seems to be dumbfounded by it because we know he's he's putting in the work and emphasizing it. And mm-hmm. defense is something that you expect to get better, but it's just not something that he just seems to be like like I don't know what the hell's going on. I mean, not not literally being like I, you know, I don't think he wants to call out his guys, but if this team is going to compete in the Big East, that I think there'll be a lot of teams. I mean, that struggled early. That'll, you know, that unfortunately for this, you know, Xavier team, I think come conference play won't look the same as they did early in the season, like a la Creighton. I, I think as they get getting healthy now, getting back into conference play, and also Villanova is one of those teams. So I, they need to figure that out quickly. If not, then it could be they can find themselves in trouble come conference play. They can flat out score, man, on the offensive end. They got great balance. They'll figure that out. I'm not worried about that. But in that league, you got to guard. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's the Big East and, you're going to have to figure it out. I mean, I think yeah, the teams that we expected to be weird. good early are going to be better. Weird. Late. Weird that the game that really stood out to me was the game against Georgetown, right? When they put up 102 points, and that was what, about 10 days ago now? Um, and they gave and, up, what, 90? And they gave up 89 to Georgetown. And Sean afterwards came out, and I don't have the coat right in front of me at the moment, but he came out and kind of ripped his guys at a game where they put up 102 points. Like, we are, right. we're not going to do anything if we can't guard. And Greg, I think a little bit of it is, um, just kind of structural with that roster, right? Like when you have Jack Nungy and when you have Zach Fremantle, and those are two of what your three, four best players, right? Two guys that are all conference talented. Um, you got to have them on the floor. I don't know how you create a team that's going to be elite defensively with those two guys on the floor together. So it might just be the kind of thing where um, you try to, you do the best you can. And in the, the, the moments where you definitely need a stop, then you get your best five defensively and put them out on the floor. But I think that's kind of what you have to do. The thing, yeah. the thing though, that's concerning to me is that sometimes you don't want to be zone. You don't want to be a zone guy. Like you want a man to man, but your personnel dictates you just can't be a great man to man defensive team. And when you're not, I mean, people think of zone just standing around and it's not, you can have an active zone that eliminates, you know, you know, movement and isolation and things like that. So, I mean, a lot of coaches just, Come hell or high water, just won't do it. And sometimes your personnel dictates you, you, you because you're going to be in trouble if you got to. That's what we talked about with Kentucky. You're going to be in trouble if I got to start mitching and matching lineups just to get a certain aspect of the game done. Unless you're talking late game, final situation. But throughout the game, you can't be like, oh, I'm going to put this group in for defense, and then I'm going to put this five in because I want to score. And then this point, I mean, that that that's a tough way to do it. We, we talk about it a lot, right? Teams that don't where their their best five offensively and their best five defensively isn't the same five. Like that's 
that's concerned. We talked about it was Purdue last year. We talked about it a lot with, yeah. right? Yeah. You couldn't have Trevion Williams and Zach Eby on the floor at the same time, which meant that your best five offensively had a different core lineup than your best five defensively, which is it's a little bit of a red flag. Yeah, when I look at this Xavier team personnel-wise, I the thing I would push back on with the comparison to Purdue is that last year with Purdue, I felt like you could very comfortably go through and pick a different five than whatever five was on the floor at any given time and be like, oh, well, this would give you this instead. What's Painter doing? With this group, I don't feel like they're that deep. And yes, they're talented, but I feel like once you get down to the six, seven spot on this roster, you're kind of like, eh, I mean, the top five are the top five, right? You want Fremantle on the floor. You want Nunji on the floor. You want Sule Boom on the floor. But even in, in this transfer portal era that we're in, like Jack Nunji came from Iowa. I mean, that he's never been on a good defensive team. Sule Boom, <laughs> he's never been on a good defensive team. Like these guys are who they are. So when I look at uh, the idea of these resolutions, honestly, like I think you're right, Rob. The resolution would obviously be let's get some defense. I just feel like that's almost like a, a Christmas miracle being gifted to them if they suddenly start defending. I don't know that this team is going to be the one to turn that I'll, around. How about this? I'll give you this, and then we can move on to the next team because producer Trevor is already in our ear yelling at us that we're going too long. <laughs> um, the, to me, the resolution is get Desmond Claude and Can Craft up to the point where you can get them 20 to 25 minutes a night and you feel comfortable having them on the floor. You get to seven or eight deep, and I think those two guys are – uh, they are what allow you to kind of go with like a, a four kind of wing, four perimeter player lineup, and it would force one of Fremantle or Nudgy to the bench if those guys come along. We heard in the offseason, Desmond Claude could be a guy that was NBA potential, right? We heard about how good Cam Craft was in their kind of summer workout. So get those two guys up and running to the point where they are legitimate rotation potential starters at the Big East level by the end of the season. And I think we're talking, having a different conversation about Xavier.